Let's talk about the environment for a moment and more specifically sustainable energy. So the environment and also keeping our lights on very much on the agenda of PwC's final economic outlook report for the year. Yeah, we're there already. Can you believe it? End of the year. The strategy and accounting firm highlighting several key areas that need to be addressed to resolve our energy crisis. They include less reliance on coal, using more green technology and having more scale uh, small-scale energy producers, or IPPs, I imagine is what we're talking about, PwC economist Dr. Christy Fullion joining us uh, from Cape Town this morning. Dr. Fullion, good to have you with us. And when we talk about all these various issues, where do we begin uh, trying to deal with this issue? When we talk about narrowing the electricity deficit, sounds wonderful, practically a lot more difficult to achieve. Oh, yes. If it was easy, we wouldn't have the problem. Uh, I think some of your viewers view, looking at this show today, they uh, might be facing load shedding later today, this evening, this afternoon. It obviously depends on where you're located in the country. But the reality is that we have a shortage of electricity. Uh, if the, the solutions were easy, uh, we wouldn't have the problem. Um, and I think at this stage, there's a lot of focus on renewable energy, uh, solar, wind, some of those opportunities, so those technologies, where we're thinking about in the next few years, many of those projects being able to come online to reduce the energy deficit. Now, there's obviously a role for the public sector to play. There's also a role for the private sector to play. We know there's lots of plans in especially the mining sector for uh, own generation of power, less reliance on the grid. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big issue. It's a big challenge. And like I said, if the answers were easy, we probably would have solved them already. Yeah, we probably would have. Uh, COP27, of course, is one of the big talking points uh, over the past few weeks as well. What did you make of that? How did you think as far as the ship of powerlessness that we are as a country? Uh, are we having any better bearing and direction as a ship in South Africa on power after COP27? Uh, should we be hopeful? Well, I think COP27 was good for South Africa. Uh, following last year's pledge by a group of developed economies to provide South Africa with financing to help us transition away from a dependence on coal and more towards renewable energy, uh, South Africa did a lot of work to get a plan on the table this year and last or earlier this month. Our president was actually in Egypt to present this plan for a just energy transition. And the financiers were very happy. Uh, they approved of what we were planning in terms of renewable energy, in terms of investing in, in, in electric vehicles, for example. So COP was good for us, I think. It, uh, it, it provided us with a lot more answers than we had before then. It provided us with a bit more certainty about where some of the finance Mm. will come from that we need for this energy transition. Not all of it, we still need a lot more to move away from our dependence on coal, but at least COP27 was good from that perspective. Our plan is on the table now, as often is the case with South Africa, we need to implement this plan. That go. could be yeah. where some of the challenges pop up. Yeah, it's all about the implementation, uh, as is always the case in our country as well. And I want to ask about the implementation because when it comes to the financing that you're talking about, Doctor, uh, it's all about sentiment in the economy as well. And are you getting a sense as we start putting up our Christmas trees economically, do you get a sense then that uh, the global economy, those investors that we need for that financing, believe we could get this right? We need their money, but do they believe we can get it right? So for the private sector aspect of this, it's very important to build confidence. If it's whether it's a local investor or a foreign investor, whoever wants to put money into these renewable projects, they need confidence in where the country is going, where governance is going, where business confidence is going, where employment is going, because we've got that social risk associated with the lack of job creation. Uh, at least we got some positive unemployment numbers yesterday, but still we've got a massive challenge with unemployment and inequality, which does carry some risk. So it's very important for us as a country to be able to build that confidence amongst actual already investors, but also potential investors. We as a country, and by that I mean the money that government has at its disposal, it's not enough to get this energy transition to where it needs to be. We need a lot of private sector money. And mm. for that, you need certainty about policy, you need to know where the legal system, the policy system will be 5, 10, 20 years from now. And I think that's been a challenge for us as a country of the past 5 to 10 years, knowing where policy stands in terms of energy regulation, business regulation, uh, the management of our infrastructure, of our port systems. So it's very important for us to build that confidence for people to be thinking, 
I can actually put my money there and make a good return because there's other countries that are very interested in getting green finance from abroad. And if we don't make it very attractive, then the money could go elsewhere. And we, we don't want that to happen. No, certainly not. Uh, just a last brief question to you, Doctor, if you could imagine PwC and Dr. Fulyun is sending government a Christmas present underneath their tree. They're going to find one of two boxes. It's going to be a positive sentiment and a positive outlook on 2022 or a negative one. Which box do you think government would choose under their Christmas tree, positive or negative? I think that when it comes to load shedding, 2022 was not a good year and the box would probably not be a very, very attractive one. Uh, so we're holding thumbs that this just energy transition plan will actually be able to give us a bigger, better Christmas box for next year. Uh, let's see when we open it up if it actually happens next year, if, mm. if it turns out to be positive. Well, I think we all know one thing. While they open their Christmas presents under the government Christmas tree, the lights won't be on because we'll probably have load shedding on Christmas Day. Santa won't even be able to find the tree. PwC economist Dr. Christy Fulhoun. Appreciate uh, the insight. Great to talk to him as well, making sense of what was a bit of a rough year uh, for the economy. But sustainable energy very much on the agenda. Is that the way that we're going to move in 2023? We wait to see.